Sweden just unveiled a project that could change the balance of naval power in the Baltic. Saab is developing a brand new, large, autonomous submarine. No crew, no bunks, no hot meals, no stinky sailors, just a silent machine prowling beneath the waves. And unlike Russia's nuclear cruise missile zombie ships, this one is designed for the future. Hey everyone, Wes O'Donnell here, journalist, veteran, and eternal skeptic of anything Russia claims floats. And today we're talking about Saab's LUUV, or LUV, short for Large Uncrewed Undersea Vehicle. Think of it as Sweden's answer to the rising demand for unmanned systems below the surface. And maybe, just maybe, Europe's second cousin twice removed to Australia's Ghost Shark program. And this time, I promise, no Swedish chef jokes. Let's get into what this thing is, what it can do, why it matters, and how it stacks up against other undersea robots on the world stage. Saab just signed a 60 million kronar contract with the Swedish Defense Materiel Administration, or FMV. Their task? Build and test a large autonomous submarine. This isn't a paper concept either. Saab's promising sea trials by summer of 2026. They'll integrate their existing autonomous ocean core system, which already runs autonomous surface vessels, into this new platform. That means the software brain is already mature. They're just strapping it to a bigger, tougher undersea body. For now, the Louvre won't be armed. It's built as a sensor platform, mapping seabed cables, spotting hostile submarines, monitoring pipelines, and giving commanders a quiet eye in the deep. But if you think this thing is just a fancy underwater Roomba, you haven't been paying attention to the trajectory of drone warfare. So why does the Baltic need this? Well, let's zoom out for a second. The Baltic Sea is a geopolitical pressure cooker. It's shallow, it's crowded, and it's ringed by NATO members on almost every shore, with one exception. Russia's heavily militarized Kaliningrad enclave, bristling with missiles, radar, and naval forces. That chunk of real estate alone keeps NATO planners up at night. What makes the Baltic especially tricky is the geography. Unlike the vast Pacific Ocean or even the North Atlantic, the Baltic is more like a saltwater lake. Narrow, confined, and easy to surveil if you've got the right tools. For Russian submarines, it's a claustrophobic nightmare. There aren't many places to hide. And that's where Saab's Louvre comes in. A small fleet of autonomous subs patrolling beneath the surface could give Sweden and its NATO partners something they've never had before. Constant underwater visibility in a region where seconds of warning can mean the difference between stopping an incursion or watching it unfold. And let's not forget the infrastructure angle. The Baltic is littered with seabed assets, pipelines, energy cables, and data links connecting Scandinavia and mainland Europe. Blowing up one pipeline like Nord Stream sent shockwaves through global energy markets. Imagine if Moscow tried to systematically target undersea infrastructure. Louvre could act as both a watchdog and a tripwire, quietly keeping tabs on these arteries of Europe's economy and catching saboteurs before they strike. There's also a deterrence factor. Russia knows NATO can see its ships and planes, but if Moscow suspects there are autonomous Swedish sentinels quietly patrolling the seabed, every Russian sub that leaves port suddenly has to operate as if it's being watched. That uncertainty alone can slow down operations and complicate planning. In short, the Baltic needs Louvre because it gives Europe something it currently lacks, a persistent, risk-free presence in one of the most contested maritime regions on Earth. It doesn't just guard against the dramatic big war scenarios, it protects against the slow burn gray zone tactics Russia favors. From pipeline sabotage to creeping naval provocations, the Louvre is not a nuclear power giant. It's designed for practical endurance. Think weeks underwater, not months. Its purpose is to gather intelligence, provide early warning, and deny Russian ships freedom of movement. And here's the key. Unmanned subs are cheaper. Sweden can build a handful of these for the price of keeping a single manned attack sub at sea. That scalability makes them a powerful force. 
So what about Australia's Ghost Shark? Well, Australia is already developing its Ghost Shark XL AUV with Anderul Industries. Ghost Shark is designed for long-range patrols in the Pacific, stealthily monitoring choke points and potentially carrying weapons. The comparison is fascinating. Ghost Shark is a Pacific Predator. Big, long-range, optimized for covering vast ocean distances. Built by Anderul Ghost Shark is a next-gen, extra-large autonomous underwater vehicle. Modular, AI-powered, and crewless. It's not a concept, it's operational, ahead of schedule, and soon to be tested in RIMPAC, one of the world's largest naval exercises. This thing doesn't surface, it doesn't talk, it just gets launched and disappears into contested waters to spy, strike, lay mines, or make Chinese admirals very nervous. Louvre, by contrast, is a Baltic specialist. It doesn't need to cross the Pacific. It needs to loiter, persist, and dominate a shallow, contested, sensor-rich environment. Think of Ghost Shark as the Blue Water Hunter and Louvre as the Green Water Sentinel. Both represent the same doctrinal shift, moving from a few expensive manned subs to many uncrewed ones. Okay, so let's talk about capabilities. What can the Louvre do? Well. Well, specs are scarce, Saab's keeping the details classified, and rightly so. But the mission set itself is obvious. There's seabed surveillance. The Louvre can map the ocean floor and keep tabs on undersea cables and pipelines. After Nord Stream, Europe understands just how vulnerable those lines are. Louvre is your early warning tripwire. Then there's your anti-submarine warfare support. It may not drop torpedoes yet, but it can hunt. By carrying sonar arrays and relaying data back, Lou becomes a forward-deployed scout. Spot the Russian sub early, cue in the manned sub or the ASW aircraft to finish the job. Then there's intelligence gathering. Signals intelligence, acoustic signatures, even watching shipping lanes. Louvre can provide the kind of persistent surveillance that satellites or patrol planes simply can't sustain. And then there's risk-tolerant mission. Want to check out Kaliningrad's naval approaches or poke around Sevastopol's outskirts? Send a robot. If it gets caught or destroyed, you'll lose hardware not people. And finally, there's an arms control angle. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Saab and Sweden are saying this first Louvre won't be weaponized, but anyone who's studied drones knows how quickly that line blurs. The first Predator UAVs were just reconnaissance platforms. A few years later, they were carrying Hellfires. A Louvre with a torpedo bay or loitering undersea drones would change the naval chessboard. Imagine Russia trying to sortie a sub and not knowing whether there are five Louvres sitting silently in its path. Russia, of course, claims to have its own unmanned underwater vehicles, including the nuclear-powered Poseidon Doomsday drone. But Poseidon is basically an aquatic Bond villain weapon designed for nuclear blackmail, not realistic battlefield dominance. The Louvre, like the Ghost Shark in Australia, is the opposite. It's practical, it's scalable, and it's usable in day-to-day -day gray zone conflict. This is the kind of platform that denies Russia plausible deniability. You mine a cable, and a Louvre is going to catch you red-handed. By 2026, we'll see Louvre trials in the Baltic, and if those go well, Sweden won't be alone. Poland, Finland, and even other Baltic states could piggyback into this tech, creating a network of robotic sentinels that blanket the sea. Meanwhile, navies are watching both the Louvre and the Ghost Shark project with interest. Together, these systems hint at a future where undersea warfare is less about a few billion dollar submarines and more about swarms of smart, autonomous machines. So here's the takeaway. Sweden's Louvre is not the flashiest project in the headlines, but it may be one of the most consequential. It's Europe quietly preparing to make sure Russia never gets free reign in the Baltic again. Russia is still clinging to Cold War relics like the Admiral Nakimov. Sweden is building the future, uncrewed, autonomous, and persistent. And if the ghost shark is the Pacific's shadow, the Louvre could be the Baltic's guardian. That's it for today, friends. When you subscribe, it slightly increases the chance that a Russian tank gets stuck in the mud. Science can't explain it. And as always, Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.